Hey there, YouTube. Super Brain AK here. And I made a thing. Um, what is it? Uh, it's a DC to DC converter that is 100% isolated. Yeah, I don't know if you can really tell. But I'll pull you off the tripod. Well, I've been messing around with my. Uh, 1500 watt boost converters did some uh, oscilloscope data on it and well on the discord if you're on the discord you might know focus there you go I think I popped it this is the original MOSFET on the uh that they come with. I don't know why it looks like that. It's all weird. Anyway, I popped it. So I pulled the MOSFET off the board. I'm going to keep messing with it, but it's only after I do a little bit more data because, well, I was using a MOSFET driver. This is a TC4420, which is a non-inverting 6 amp MOSFET driver. Well, the story goes, I was running it up, oh, sorry, on the uh, big boost converter. There's a conductor that, that completes the picture for you. <laughs> um, well, originally, I popped the... A little buck converter for the logic control and so I added a, a CEPIC converter which I've added a gigantic heat sink just because I can so I added that on powered the MOSFET driver with that and well not you know a couple tests later and turning it on with 24 volts in it popped the MOSFET so, I might need to tr play around with um, uh, it turning on later, like having having the uh, low voltage high set higher so it turns on later, which is a very similar thing that I've added to this because, well, it would just short right out because it's trying to turn on and oscillate when the voltage isn't high enough. So, what I did here is I took an El Cheapo um, uh, let's see, TC oh let's bring you a little closer and focus um, XL6009 board, which is was a sepic converter it had an extra inductor here and then a capacitor and that made it a sepic but i already have one which is basically the same and this one was the cheap version um i'm using this as my um switching controller it has an enable pin and then the feedback which is this blue wire coming back over to this led um this is its enable pin, and then in tucked away in here is actually the inverting MOSFET driver. Um, uh, TC4429. Um, because this is active low, which is how this would be, but I'm using a normal NPN transistor, well, MOSFET. Oh, which is a uh, uh, RFP two fifty N. Yeah. So I've got it pulled high, so when it turns right on, it's off. And then once this guy turns on, it turns it on. So once this guy pulls it low, this turns on, which 
turns on the inductor. Uh, power coming in from the main power input. Uh, this is the gate to the MOSFET. And then power comes straight off these two capacitors. I don't know if you can see them in here. Just barely. Hidden under this big guy, which is the output capacitor. So power goes in through this coil, out through this coil, into the uh, drain of the MOSFET, IRFP250, and then, so this one is isolated from these other coils, this is what, 4.898 microhenries, and then between here and here is 5.37, which is my secondary which is the output of this big capacitor. These are, this is a 3300 and this is a 2200 paired with a 220 microfarad. Um, the positive off the coil comes up and around into this diode, which is a BL 3040PT, which I believe I got from a computer power supply, and which that rectifies it onto the capacitor. So I have complete isolation. Notice the grounds are not connected. And how do you get the feedback? Well, simple optocoupler. And if you can see that there. Uh, I've got a 204 uh, 10 turn potentiometer 1k resistor I'm only using one uh, the center and the out one of the outsides of this potentiometer 1k resistor which jumps over originally I had an LED just to see if it was turning on or not Optocoupler comes back to ground, which is on the negative of the capacitor output. And then this is a 10k pull down on the end of this 1k. The 1k is just to protect in case I turn this way low and then the current goes ridiculous. And then on the output of this, I've got the 12 volts that is the input supply which goes to this guy, the MOSFET driver. Um, this little circuit, which is the um, low voltage using a zener. Um, but anyway, the positive comes in to the optocoupler, which when the voltage is high enough on the this side, it sends current through here, which goes to the feedback pin on there. And then the... Uh, enable circuit um, turns on the enable pin well first it pulls it low through the 1k resistor nope 10k resistor and then when the voltage gets high enough positive going through here through the zener which is an 11 volt zener power go through this LED to give me an indication and then pull up the enable pin on the XL679. So, when you turn it on, it turns on. I've got the input, output, and I'll show you it working. Yeah, let's focus in on the, whoop. That's not a good angle. And, those are probably gonna be terrible to read. Because just because they're so brightly backlit. Anyway, you got the DPS 3012 on the input. Boing. Power on them on. And then you see this LED is on. Uh, you can barely see the other LED on. That's just a power indicator for the 12 volts. And oh, I didn't even talk about the transformer that I'm using really. It's from a 
uh, probably a TV power supply. So this side would be the mains, and this side are all the outputs on the DC side. Uh, so we got 12 volts in. This I know this is backwards, but feeding power in, pulling power out. If they're both sent the same way, then, well, they're upside down. But this is the output. So we got 15.7. And... Bring it down. Whoop. Sorry. This guy's got a uh, low voltage. Anyway, we've got six volts. Uh, turn on my 10 amp, 60 volt, 150 watt load. Let me see. One amp there. And bring the voltage up. Let's see if I can pop it. Ten volts. There we go, twelve volts out. Uh, Nineteen watts in, fifteen watts out. So it's not the most efficient. Whoops. But it does work. Uh, let's go amperage, bring the amperage up to five amps. Cause I feel like pulling some power. Let's go to what, 17 volts, which is where it likes it. Cause it's, you know, four to five microhenries. So it's a step up. And so we're getting about uh, two amps out, and we got fifty watts in, thirty six watts out. So once again, not the most efficient, but completely isolated. I'm going to take this jumper, see if I can blow it up. Uh, take this positive. Yeah, there goes the fan on the 150 watt load. And so that's the positive of the output. And connect it to the negative of the input. Hey look, nothing happened. Well, a little bit happened. Probably just because... Um, you know, capacitive and the um, power supply on the DC load is um, not the greatest, the best isolated, but it doesn't blow up. Disconnected, connected. Hey, right, let's go to the positive, positive to positive. Nope. Nothing. So, there we go. Um, so yeah, I'm just experimenting with this. It's a fully isolated DC to DC converter. I can handle 40 watts. I know this transformer is probably pretty darn huge for what it is doing. But, I could certainly tap off the 140 microhenry uh, winding on this one side, or the like 300, 400 microhenry winding, which could give me, you know, a couple thousand volts. <laughs> a thousand volt isolated DC to DC converter. Yeah. Or just, you know... Make some better current limiting. Oh, which I can show you. I can bring the voltage down so that enable circuit working. Yep, it's off. Wait, did it go too much? 
Oh, we're great. Okay, so it's not on. And there we go. Oh. <laughs> Crash the output supply, but yeah, 9.8, 9, 10, 10.2, and it's back on. Ta da! So, yeah, that's just to help it turn on more reliably. Because if it didn't do that, then um, it would try to turn on and short itself out. But I am going to quit rambling and see you guys in the next video where I might have some fun with the Cephic or with the boost converters. Because I do want to put both of these in parallel. I've done it, but it wasn't using the MOSFET drivers. Now that I think I know how to use the MOSFET drivers, I'm going to upgrade the heatsink, put them on that, and then use two of them to put two brand new um, IRF P260s onto there, and hopefully they won't blow up. I hope. I don't know, you know what this MOSFET is, how many amps it can pull, but these aren't uh, the best. What is this, an NCE01H21T. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my fun experiment of a random thing I made. If I, uh, if I do want to, you know, try pulling some marks from that, that might be fun. I do have a uh, neon bulb protecting the MOSFET. So, I will see you in the next video, and make sure to check out my other videos, either, or there, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.